that was a lot of sacrifice. I sacrificed everything I love. Listen to the music. And yet people, unbeknownst, have no clue what that means. How could they? They've never walked a day in my shoes. I have addressed this issue in my hero worshiping videos. Of course, you or I have not walked a day in his shoes. The reverse is true. He has not walked a minute or a second in my shoes. He has no idea what I've been through. The difference between us is that I don't come out on the internet and tell these stories at all. I focus on grammar to me, which is the most important thing. Now I do know the stories of this man. Now he says, how could they know what it's like to walk in my shoes? Of course, nobody knows except him. That's, that's sort of a, a redundant statement. Um, just like he doesn't know what it's like to walk in our shoes, right? But we know the stories of him going to prison, going to jail, being starved, uh, being beaten up, the trials and tribulations that, that he's gone through. And I have much honor for that, if it's true. Of course. There's no doubt about it. Those things are admirable. To, and I admire that in anyone. Even if I don't like them, I do like them, whatever. If someone stands up for what they think is correct against oppression and aggression, yeah, you have my honor. That's awesome. That's commendable. However, to use that as a tool to perhaps create the aura that you are somehow above other people, that you somehow have some sort of authority over other people because of what you've been through as a reason for you to do the things that you do to have, to claim certain positions, that's not correct. Because you're asking people to take your word for that when there's no continuance of the evidence for it. There's no footage available to, for anyone. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been going on for years. He's been claiming there's been video footage that hasn't been released. Well, if he runs the world, if he runs the earth, if he runs the banking system, if he's commander, whatever, if he's chief, postal, whatever, judge, supreme, whatever, grand poobah, then don't you think that he does have the authority to release this stuff? But he claims that he doesn't. He claims that they are holding it back. So does he have power or doesn't he have power? Sounds like, just like David, like he claimed David was, sounds like he's neutered because the fiction system is paying absolutely no attention to him. At least by my perception, when I look at the fiction system, since this grammar technology came out, I see no change. And by change, I mean, I don't see any correction. Those are not synonyms, but I am using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun to convey this stuff with the honor and grace. So this is just the point I'm trying to make here. You got a guy claiming all these titles and all this power and authority and blah, blah, blah. And yet, after 20 years, still can't authorize one single video out of the thousands of hours that he claims are out there. Can't get that footage out on the internet. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if he would release something like that, showing him walking into the Supreme Court and the judges running out and scared and all the stuff, you know, that happened? Can you imagine what that would do for his business? Can you imagine how many people would flock to his construct? Could you imagine the bank he would make off of that? I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. But he hasn't released it. Why? Because by his admission, he doesn't have it. And obviously, I mean, he doesn't have the power to 
the might makes right to make the fiction release it. So what what is going on here? They never went down those doors to to actually put a commerce in place that will financially secure generations to come. They have no they have no position to throw stones at me. Well, I just also want to make it clear, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm not throwing stones. I feel sad if someone thinks that. But in this field, in this domain, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, there's correctness and then there's void correctness. I'm showing inconsistencies in this man's testimony. I'm showing inconsistencies in his grammar performances. These are not stones. I mean, he can perceive them as stones. I can't speak for him. For me, it's just me remembering back in 2017 when I started out and I was just a novice, a newbie, and all these questions started popping up. And I could never get any answers from anyone until I started researching, looking into it with the help of uh, some other individuals. And now I have a much clearer picture of what exactly is going on with that man. And while I'm not going to come out and, and say anything disparaging personally about the man, what I think about him as an individual, what I am doing is pointing out inconsistencies. Pointing out inconsistencies in someone's testimony, just like in any courtroom, you know, this is what we do to, to, to arrive at a conclusion, to arrive at a, a judgment, and also in the grammar. So they're not stones. Unfortunately, that seems to be what he and his followers, uh, that's the way they look at any little criticism of, of him. They look at it as people are attacking him uh, and things like that, rather than addressing the grammatical inconsistencies and mistakes, rather than addressing and explaining any of that, they just immediately go on the defensive and then try to mudsling, basically. And yet they do on a constant level. It's just a lack of knowledge, fear, places that they have not been, doors that they've not walked through, doors that I had the courage to walk through. I had the knowledge to walk through. And I'll never forget the day that they kept my ex-business partner, David Hyphen Wynn Colin Miller, out of a room. And I had to go further at the Vatican into a different space. And they said, David, you don't have the knowledge to go through that door. And this is where David, I looked at David, I was like, oh man, what am I getting myself into? Because now I'm leaving. You're going it alone. I'm going it alone. Ladies and gentlemen, I kindly request that you rewind that and listen to what the man just said. I will paraphrase. He said, when he and David were at the Vatican, whoever they were there with, whoever that was guiding them through the buildings or, or the hallways, the passageways, the catacombs, wherever they were, stopped David and said, David, you don't have the knowledge to go any further. And then looked at Russell and said, you do have the knowledge. Think about that psychology, folks. I always wondered, who is Russell talking about in these scenarios, obviously, is some sort of uh, religious leader. We'll call them a judge, okay? Because that's what they were doing. They were judging knowledge. They judged that David didn't have the knowledge and that Russell did. So whoever this individual was, Russell was admitting that they had authority over him and David which means they had knowledge, which means whoever it was had closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Whoever that religious judge was at the Vatican. 